here. She's here, but uh, she's busy. Crew uh, wants to come inside. We just made it in. Crew wants to come inside, so we're going to bring him inside. Hopefully, it won't happen like last time. <laughs> last time, crew said uh, everything's getting cut short. Okay. So one thing I got to do, I got to make sure this cord is high and tight. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right let's see let's see how this how this goes um things well, get caught on his curly tail yeah it does it gets caught on oh, a lot of things over. are you in there there we go <laughs> he's drinking water now in case you can't hear in case you can't hear that uh he's drinking water but i'm glad everyone could uh be here tonight Man, there's so much going on. I don't know if any of you have been catching my stories. I've been putting stories up today. Well, I've been putting up stories up the past couple of days about uh, all the things we've been doing. But uh, it's crazy. There's a lot going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, he is thirsty. Uh, how much? How many gallons of water do you think this guy goes through in a day? Maybe one. <laughs> he goes through one gallon of water a day. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, honestly, I should probably drink. Uh, I should probably be drinking that much water. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> he might have just wanted to come in for water. Well, okay. Okay. He just wanted to drink a water. Now he's headed back out. Um, what can you do? <laughs> Dog's got a drink. Um, okay, we're going high with this cord. <laughs> Bye, crew. Maybe he doesn't want to go out. He wants to eat is what he wants. He wants to be in the way, I think. <laughs> he wants attention. Um, but we are working. We've started on the final bottle window, which is exciting. The Gothic arch. That thing is huge. Um... Well, I feel like I shouldn't be talking about the Gothic Arch until you're here. All right, there we go. Oh, no. I thought it was getting settled. <laughs> He's like, he gets like, he get, crew gets a little rambunctious during the evening time. I think he gets kind of hungry. You know, it's about usually the time about the time we eat. So he gets kind of excited. So I don't know. Uh, but the final bottle window. Now, a little while ago, you had your mom out here and you two were kind of working on the design for that. Sorry, I can't talk right now. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is a bad time for the crew. It's a bad time. So, oh, no. I, I, I like okay. so a while ago, uh, Jess has been working with her mom on the design for that Gothic arch window. Um, she realized though, I mean, there were just tech technical difficulties with that particular design, so we couldn't kind of couldn't go through with that. But there's been a redesign. Jessica kind of was out here with her brother the other day. No footage of that, unfortunately. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the, they kind of reworked the whole thing, uh, reworked the whole design. But it kind of stayed true, I think, to the um, kind of what her and her mom had worked on as far as the design goes. So I'm pretty excited about that, I think. 
Well, with the redesign, I'll tell you, there were a lot more bottles. There were a lot more bottles that we had to cut. So I've been pretty busy today cutting through all them bottles. There was a lot of them. And I'm, technically, I'm still not done. <laughs> I still got quite a bit more to do. Um, hello from East Texas. Love the channel. Thank you very much. It's the crew show. Yeah, crew's kind of like stealing the uh, all the attention here today. The Mindful Homestead, how's it going? Um, man, I think I'm getting pretty good at cutting all these bottles. I don't even know how many I've cut. Through. How many bottles do you think I've cut today? Oh, I don't know because I didn't I didn't count the bottles. She just she just set them all up. Do you think a couple dozen, a few dozen? Maybe. I've been busy. <laughs> and not only were there a lot of bottles, but man, these are the, some of the craziest bottles, man. You guys really were you and your brother like trying to find difficult bottles? Like, let's see him cut through these. <laughs> well, not intentionally making it hard for you, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. We did find some interesting bottles. Like, oh, look at this one's an unusual shape. Yeah, so it's been kind of a challenge, and I've just been taking it kind of easy. Uh, man, there were some huge jugs that I had to cut through. I mean, these things were massive, but they'll kind of make for a cool addition to those bottle windows because those things were huge. Um, oh, I don't even, I don't have to hold this anymore, I guess. <laughs> I'm still holding the cord. But if crew comes back around here, I'm bringing the cord back up again. Uh, let me know if there are any questions. But, um, so Matt, what have you been doing today? You've been all over the place. Well, let's see, there's a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's like, let's not talk about my day. We got a question. What specific equipment do you need to cut the bottles? But we're just using the tile saw. Just the right. tile saw and the rest is like safety equipment. So uh, I think you could get like a regular tile saw, but the one we have is like a wet tile saw. So I think especially for the glass, that, that makes it a lot better. So like there's not a whole lot of glass dust coming up in your face. Yeah. I mean, I still wear a bunch of protective equipment. I still wear a mask and uh, safety glasses and gloves and everything like that because, you know, Glasses, glass dust could be pretty nasty stuff. You don't want that probably getting in your lungs, your eyes, or anything like that. And you guys probably can't see, but his shirt is like sprayed. Oh, the water kind of sprays out. And <laughs> it's... Can I? <laughs> Link over here has got some issues. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, be aware of that if you're looking to make some glass bottle bricks. North Star Prep Center, hello. Late to the party. What kind of reservations do you have about living in an earth bag home? Do you have any reservations about living in an earth bag home? Not too many, just because, um, I mean, I've heard good things from people that we know that live in earth bag homes or adults that way. Um, I think the only thing I wasn't sure about was having like that thermal mass like what does that do to the temperature um also like humidity in there it's supposed to kind of control that but you know i'm not sure like if things cool down too much does it take a long time to get to a good temperature in there and how do we regulate that so i guess that's uh, yeah i think the temperature is something that like we're just not 100 percent on you know uh like i've heard one person um one of our friends say that it was is really good in the summer you know she all, all she had wished for is like a little bit more airflow like uh, some type of ceiling fan or something like that but at the time she could really take the heat mm -hmm. so that didn't really bother her now we recently had the opportunity to visit my little homestead mm -hmm. and you know they said a like 
with these earth bag with the, their earth bag buildings you know they're hot in the summer and they're cold in the winter so i think especially probably during the winter time you know it's a challenge kind of keeping everything warm and heating everything up mm-hmm. but our design is a little bit different from theirs you know i mean uh they got a little bit more like traditional roofing and um uh, insulation on there whereas we go with the dome so i think it'll be a little different (laughs) a little different temperature wise he wants to end this thing i think he's hungry and he's like you know what i think you guys are done (laughs) he might be all right he might be all right we'll see any other reservations Mm. is that about it i think so I think it'd be pretty cool. I'm actually kind of excited to living in that, like making that into a living space. <laughs> I think just gonna try putting crew outside again. You think he's ready this time? Oh. No. Now he's going to go, uh, you know, crew, I think he kind of injured his one of his paws or a joint, uh, the other day, getting in and out of, uh, getting on and off the couch. So, I mean, I think we detailed that in one of our videos not too long ago and he's kind of limping a little bit and for the most part, he's a little, he's better. Yeah. I've been taking him on some, uh, some decent walks, but, uh, just like. I think he's still like kind of shy when like getting out of the trailer and stuff like that, going down those steps. I think he's a little hesitant sometimes. A little bit, yeah. I give him a joint supplement every day Mm -hmm. and I feel like that helps him too. If he does like, you know, twist a joint or something and hurt it, it seems to be able to bounce back. Yeah, he wasn't limping for very long. Yeah. Affordable Desert Living, hello. Uh, will you be putting solar panels on your dome home? Nope. I didn't, that'd be kind of difficult, I think. Putting them, well, not impossible, but uh, now nah, we won't be putting the solar panels on them. We're just going to leave the solar panels where they are. Um, little snapshot into a future project. Um, I'm probably going to be redoing our solar mount because what I have set up there was kind of kind of a temporary thing because I thought the whole solar setup was going to move. Mm-hmm. Now I find out that it can stay. So I'll probably just kind of like rework that uh, that ground mount and everything will just stay where it's at. No need to move all that equipment. As everything's hooked up, everything's working fine. I just have to, um, I'm just going to redo the mount and then It'll be a lot more permanent, a lot more sturdy. I got some ideas for that. I don't know what questions you answered while I was messing with crew. But... That's okay. Throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what inspired the design for the final bottle window? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, why don't you talk about well, that? Well, kind of my mom, because uh, she came over and we were kind of working on the design together. Mm-hmm. And so she had an idea, kind of moving bottles around. And I thought, oh, this, this looks kind of cool. And um, so I, I think she came up with that design. And I had to change it a little bit, um, but I'm kind of keeping the same basic motif that mm-hmm. she... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's going to look really nice. So what was, like, what do you think her inspiration was? What do you think? Just looking cool? Uh, Well, she mentioned kind of, like, sun rays kind of radiating out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Are you planning to ventilate the lower level and the main floor? Well, we do have vent pipes in the the main floor. So, and I think for the the underground part, Hmm. we'll put in um, some like vents, some vents as well. 
Mm-hmm. And plenty maybe of ventilation. Like fans. Yeah. It's just something to kind of help the air move around. Is the second dome going to be as tall and big as the first dome? Yes. Same size. Yeah, it's going to be another massive project. Uh, there's still a lot to do with this dome before we get onto that one. So I'm not too worried about that right, right now. Mm -hmm. But it'll pretty much, I think we're kind of happy with the way this turned out. So it'll be kind of be very similar. Yeah, we're, I think we'll put a loft in there. Yeah. We'll put an eaves. Yeah, so there will be a loft in the in the second dome too, right? Yeah, but there'll be yeah. We might do it a little different, but yeah, uh, you know, we've definitely made uh, we've definitely learned some things from doing this dome that will carry over to the next dome. I definitely got some ideas, some changes I want to make. So you know, things might go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. uh, things might be work a little bit better. Yeah, but it's definitely a learning experience. It might look. Uh, Pretty similar. But yeah, but the final look will be pretty similar. Um, and will you build the hallway while building the second dome? Yeah, so we kind mm -hmm. of have the hallway like halfway built already. And so when we do the second one, we'll build like the second half of the hallway. And once the hallway is there, it won't, it still won't be kind of done. Like we'll still have to put some type of roof or covering over it. So that'll be the final touch, but I don't think that'll be too hard. Desert Dog says, have you thought about a summer dome and a winter dome? If so, how would they differ? Mm. Um, no. Um, I think we kind of would like to build for each to be as comfortable as possible all year round. Mm -hmm. So I think the, really the biggest thing will be heating the dome, keeping it warmer rather than cooler. I think it'll be fine in the summertime. I really think it will be. Yeah. Um, you know, especially sleeping down below. I, I don't have, a, I don't think that'll be an issue at all. I just might need a little supplemental heat in winter, we're mm -hmm. thinking. But what I'd like to try possibly, um, when we finish both domes, uh, we might put on some additions, um, possibly like a greenhouse on the south side and another addition mm -hmm. on the north side. And so we could like try piping in air from those areas. Mm -hmm. So like the greenhouse might be warmer air and on the north side, like cooler air. So we could kind of, you know, use those spaces for heating and cooling as well. Sure. Sure. Earthling Drew, hello. Uh, what plaster do you plan to use on the outside of the dome? Right now we're thinking of trying... Um, Nothing set in stone. Right. <laughs> but something that... Um, that was Ray Clamens, right, from Natural Building Works, who's experimenting with the prickly pear. Yeah, experimenting plaster. with that. Thank you, Desert Dog. Thank you very much for the super chat. So, um, yeah, using prickly pear um, cactus for kind of a weather resistant plastering. And cow and uh, dung. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so. Maybe manure, because I think that also works. <laughs> Might be using cow or horse dung. Yeah. Um, and if now we'll is see that... how that holds up, and if that doesn't hold up the way we want it to then we'll probably use like a lime plaster now is that either or or both combined i don't know yet i don't oh. know i haven't heard of it combined but i don't see why you couldn't so we're researching it and kind of finding out exactly how we want to go no final decisions have been made yet as everything around here you know <laughs> last minute that's when we're like okay this is what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> Larry Parrish, hello. Uh, so, you know, not, uh, was it last video or a couple of videos ago? You know, I was putting up the braces between the eaves. And I've been doing more work with the eaves. So not just working on the bottle windows, but I've also been cutting up plywood 
and putting that all around the dome. And I think it looks pretty cool. And we can kind of get up there and kind of walk around up there. All right, you got up there with me today and uh, you're kind of walking around up there. How'd you feel up there? Um, pretty secure. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I went with half inch. I don't think I even detailed that. I went with half inch plywood up there and I think it'll be fine. I mean, there won't really won't be too many people walking up there a lot. But we'll be doing other things to it as well, so it'll make it even sturdier. But technically, it's not really a walking kind of platform. But I'm kind of excited to show you guys that. And that's really a next big, huge step in kind of what we're doing with the outside, like with the upper part of the dome and everything like that. And it might give a little protection to the lower part of the dome if it does rain anytime soon. Mm -hmm. A little bit of protection. I think this will be better. I think someone made a comment in one of our videos about like why we're putting up the plywood again because that caused issues with the rain. Oh, right. Dropping off some of the cob. But I actually think this, these panels will, won't be as bad because it'll kind of run off yeah, toward the outside. So those eaves are kind of tilted. So it, it should just run off the outer edge, like away from the building. Oh no. It's very cold here in Minnesota. So cold my car will not start. Oh. Well, I'll tell you, um, you know, <laughs> we grew up in Wisconsin, so mm -hmm. you know, we've had Have you ever had that problem? We've had those experiences. Yeah. Or you can't uh get the key in the lock, the lock's like frozen Ugh. up or something. Yeah. And then you always got to plan ahead. You got to leave early because you got to brush the snow off, scrape the ice, mm -hmm. let the car warm up. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have uh, to deal with some of those issues anymore, yeah. but we got other issues. <laughs> you just trade really, uh, depending on where you live, you just trade some issues for other issues. <laughs> uh, where will the composting toilet be and how will the off gassing be controlled? So it's going to be right in the house right in the house um and we just need a, a vent basically for that and uh <clears throat> excuse me the um you know the composting doesn't really happen in the toilet so that's not really an issue you just it's all pretty much just a bucket system and then the bucket goes out to the composting station where where all the composting well, takes the, place the three barrel um system would be in the barrels so it'd be composting right. in there yeah so but i mean but the three barrel systems outside anyway they'll be outside yeah yeah inside is just a bucket uh crazy crazy why thank you so much for the uh 20 super okay. chat thank you Um, when it's, it's, I feel like it's chilly already, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I'm getting a big, I must've developed like some kind of allergy to cold weather. Yeah. Yeah. I can't deal with it anymore. It's affecting my health. Mm, that's not good. Just on those really cold mornings, but like, well, you know, those mornings have been pretty cold. Like what have been morning's been it's been below freezing the temperatures probably just hit below freezing right in the morning before like the sun rises and then it starts to warm up but uh you know that's the time i take crew out for his walk so uh, his morning walk so i gotta bundle up mm -hmm. when do you plan to plaster the inside of the home um i think probably Pretty soon. We're probably going to do a little more with the outside. The outside should be done first because just so that it's completely ready in case any rains do come so we don't mm -hmm. have to keep repatching it. But the cob's been holding up really well. Yeah. Ever since I took those boards down the first time, the cob's been doing well. Uh, Wayne Hughes, thank hey, you so Wayne. much for the $25 super chat. I really appreciate the super chat guys. I mean, um, 
you don't have to, but that it's, it's very generous yeah, and uh, awesome. that helps us out big time. And the members, all those members in there, I see all the uh, people in there with those special symbols. It really helps us out a lot for what we're doing out here. You know, we don't we don't push the uh, the memberships. Obviously, you know, most of our content is right out there for everyone to enjoy free, but it helps us keep doing what we're doing out it here. Does. So thank you so much. Uh, when you do the plumbing, will the county require you to pump gray water to the composting barrel? Um, well, we do. We will have a gray water system for most of our water, except for the kitchen sink water. The county requires us to put that into a septic. Yep. So, yeah, kitchen sink water is black water. So that must, so that's got to go to a septic. Yeah. But gray water, as long as you have proper, you can take care of it properly. You can pump that out too. Well, mm -hmm. we'll probably have it go into a mulch basin, grow some trees around there. In future builds on your property, will you choose hyper adobe tube netting instead of indi individual sandbags? For the next dome? What was that? Future builds, whatever future builds we do. On the uh, I'm not opposed to uh, doing the hyper adobe. Yeah, possibly. I mean, we'd like to try some different uh, building methods. Yeah, I would. I would have gone with uh, the super adobe. Um, if if we could get bags wide enough for the dome, we can't remember. So with the hyper adobe. Uh, again, I don't know if anyone's ever used that to build a dome. And if you do build a dome with hyper Adobe, I think you like, you still want to do, uh, barbed wire with that. But, uh, for the size of the domes that we were building, we had to go with the single use bag, the single bags. But, um, you know, if we continue to build with earth bag, um, I'd like to go with the tubes. Tubes would definitely be easier the super adobe is easier than the single bags and i think the hyper adobe is probably easier than both of those but you know like each method has its positives and negatives so mm -hmm. definitely learn about those materials before you start building was your home built with passive solar in mind yeah um well i mean they don't usually with passive solar part of it is how you orient the house like the long side of the house would be facing south mm -hmm. um and we have a dome it's a round shape but uh since we do have two domes together we kind of face that like south um also kind of considering the way the windows are placed and how they're inset so nothing's getting like direct light in the summer but it's getting more light in the winter and the two domes are kind of placed sort of like um kind of have an east-west orientation like st stacked right next to each other rather than, right yeah i mean i don't know how much that would one of those is blocking the other but it might offer a little bit of mm -hmm. solar yeah sort of like more surface facing the south yeah Desert Dog says, I like Jim and Jess's kindness as well. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. <laughs> Is there radon gas in your area? Yeah, we checked. Uh, I think it's fairly low. Mm -hmm. Usually, I mean, there's no way you can tell for sure unless you test your specific site. But generally in the area, it's not an issue. We still have a radon plan in yeah. place. But... You know, better safe than sorry. Kimberly says, hey guys, greetings from Venezuela. Sorry for the English, that's rusty. Uh, I've been following you from the start and I'm wondering if I could do it here for a while. Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, possibly, you know, uh, the road to self-sufficiency, you know, Kind of start where you're at 
with what you have and mm-hmm. just work on it little by little yeah. for sure i know it depends on kind of what your plans are and you know local regulations and everything like that mm-hmm. but uh yeah Steven says, Jess, you could paint a flagstone with a depiction of crew and the caption could be family. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, we've been getting some uh, really good ideas for... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the chat doesn't want to keep up and it keeps disappearing on me. That's, I guess, the problem with uh, the cell phones. I can't see what anyone's saying. But, um, yeah, uh, the last video, you know, we asked for suggestions on painting those uh what things to paint on the rocks and a lot of really good suggestions yeah so i uh, really appreciate uh everyone dropping stuff down in that video absolutely Oof, man i'll tell you oh we got a new member as well oh i missed that oh geez well if you uh <laughs> if you happen to spot it uh but, well, thanks Thank for the you. new member. <laughs> See, uh, like, if I don't catch it, you know, and then she's, like, following up. So yeah, sometimes we miss it. But uh, thank, but you, thank for, you for uh, joining the, the membership. Um, and where was I? What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So the wind's, uh, you know, wind's been kind of crazy. So that was kind of that was kind of hectic when I was putting up the plywood up on the eaves. That was um, wasn't too bad, but uh, it was still like you know because I'm still like over ten feet up there, and when those winds blew, it was a little yeah, it's tenuous. Yours. Yeah, Ooh. hang on tight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What would you say the biggest challenge has been so far in completing the first stone? What would I say the biggest challenge has been completing the first dome? Um, I think just sort of like our lack of experience in doing a dome. Uh, that's what I think. It's um, plus, you know, we added some things to it because, you know, we want to make it a, a nice home for ourselves. It's, going to be our forever home so we took some liberties with some of the books and we tried some new things so uh all that took quite a bit of time so i mean you know this thing took about a almost a year to do just to build though that dome so and it was just slow going because you know we wanted it to be as the best thing we could build at the time Mm -hmm. what would you say um, I gotta steal my answer. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> or because it was it was all kind of a learning process. It was all a learning. There was a lot of new things that we were doing with that you one. You know, we I mean we did research and book learning, but like actually doing it and building it. Um, Our first dome is the dome for the house, you know, and. So, I mean, I guess, you know, that's the thing to take away too, is like, maybe if you're gonna, cause we had built cylinders before and we're like, okay, well, you know, we built cylinders. So it's a round thing. It's a round thing. <laughs> and, you know, we, now we just got to do it in the dome shape. It was a little different. It was definitely a little different and uh, just took some time. Uh, Wade wants to know how we're going to get our bed downstairs. Um, and if we're going to like make a bed or if we're going to bring a bed Ooh. down there. Very good question. Maybe a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> Probably get a mattress down there. Uh, the hole we got right now going down there is pretty small, but we're going to open that it's, up it's, more. It's going to be larger. Uh, we could probably fit a mattress down, but we might like make, actually make a bed frame or something. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be a lot easier going down once I like fully open it up. I just wanted to kind of open it up so we could get down there, kind of check things out, air it out a little bit. Are we still? <laughs> see. Uh, oh, is that the? Uh... Yeah, Diane is. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. Member. Welcome to the team, Diane. Hey, we found it. <laughs> see, I think, uh, see, look at this. I'm way behind. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> like, 
I can't, uh, my phone, I don't know what happens, but it just sticks and the, the messages don't move. And then every, like screen goes blank and I don't see any messages. Ugh. See, it's happening already. I don't know why it doesn't keep up. It should just like automatically scroll up. <laughs> memory foam mattress is coming to roll. Yeah, uh, I mean, we have a memory foam mattress, but, and remember? Yeah. So, I remember when we took that out of. I think we can get, I think we can get our mattress down there, but if we need to, yeah, you can always get a new mattress. Maybe it'd be time for a new mattress anyway. I mean, how long did we have that memory foam mattress before we moved? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but probably for years. And um, and it's been sitting in that uh, shipping container for a while. So I don't know what kind of condition it's going to be in when we pull it out. So we'll see. It's the Black Widow down there. As far as I know, it is because... You didn't take it out yet. I didn't... What about you? I don't want to take it out. You're the uh, you're the, uh, the insect protector. Well, it's not an insect. It's an arachnid. It's a dangerous arachnid. Yeah, you don't want to get bit by them for sure. Okay, I think it's catching up now. Should I should I take it out? I was just gonna leave it in on down there until like we had to do some work down there. What if it has babies or something? No, it needs a male down there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Okay, you want me to remove it? I'll take it out of there. I'll take it out of there. With extreme prejudice. I look like Joanna Gaines. I think I've gotten that before. Yeah, <laughs> you've gotten that before. Uh I I've seen a lot of comments where uh you, the people have made that comparison. Now the big question is, do you know who that is? Uh, well, I know she's on uh, HGTV. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've never seen the show, though. I think when uh, when someone brought that up, I think I had to look her up. I'm like, who? <laughs> who is it? <laughs> so bad. Uh, I guess we don't watch too much TV. Are we going to cover the bags on inside cob or plaster? Probably both. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, at least cob. A little layer of cob down there for sure. What's the best part about owning 40 acres? Uh, the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, a little more buffer from neighbors and you know, it's a little more peaceful. I don't think necessarily we might have needed 40 acres. It just like that opportunity was there. Probably could have done with less. Uh, who knows if we'll be able to make use of it all. But the room is there in case we do want to expand or whatnot. So that's nice to have. I once found a black widow in my well house and an egg sack. Both got evicted. Yeah. 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 I remember I seen, uh, did you ever see Baby Black Widow? See, I touched it and now it's gone. Now it's it's off again. Um, you ever see Baby Black Widows? Ooh. We used to have so many Black Widows when we used to live in the city. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Like in the backyard, they were yeah, all around. But honestly, I just left them alone uh, because they only really came out at night. And I really think I was the best pest control because there were so many like crickets and cockroaches outside. Yeah. And honestly, we, you we know, didn't get them inside, maybe in the garage occasionally, but the black widows mostly. The black widows stay, stay outside. outside. They didn't come inside. And uh, I think they were pretty good pest control. Mm -hmm. Just gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just where I watch where you're walking at night. I gotta remember to uh, bring something over here for me to drink. Can you drink. I got some water. <laughs> See, you're always thinking ahead. Um, what's the coldest it's been lately? How low did it get so far this winter? I think it dropped down in the teens that one day, didn't it? I think it got down to 19. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Recently, it's been like low twenties. How much longer do you estimate it would take to finish your home? Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, things have definitely taken longer than anticipated, but yeah, you know, it'll. T I guess. I guess the best answer. You know, it'll take as long as it takes. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I don't feel a need in me to kind of rush the build. Um, I'm kind of enjoying the process. I would like to move on to other things. It would be nice to have that space to live in, but you know, I want to take the time to do it right and make sure it's a place that we really enjoy spending time in. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I'm enjoying the process. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, your hair will turn gray before you get done with this project. Quite possibly, quite mm. possibly. But yeah, you know, hey, <laughs> that'll just be that much more, you know, distinguished looking. <laughs> well, you know what my mom was saying? Oh, there's barking now. No. Uh, Time's up. Because my grandfather, he built a home for his family, and <laughs> my mom knew like he was constantly like working in the house building additions or changing things mm -hmm. so when we started building this she's like well you'll probably always be building yeah that might be a process that might just take years and years just to kind of like fine-tune everything and yeah. whatnot might be a never-ending process but other projects will have to come along <laughs> mm -hmm. especially growing food I really was hoping uh, this upcoming, this year would be a year we could really start expanding on the food growing. And it might still happen, but it might have to be in conjunction with the house. So we'll see. Besides prickly pear and Nepalis, are there other wild edibles? What wildlife is available for food? Yeah, I mean, we are, um, I don't know if we're technically in the Sonoran Desert, but we're in the, like, Sonoran Desert, like, area as far as the plants and animals. Um, and there's surprisingly a lot of edible things. Like, a lot mm -hmm. of the cacti are edible. Um, the cholla, the... Well, so there's there's yucca. There's a lot of yucca around here, and I think the flower buds are edible. There's also some tubers that are edible if you can find them. Um, there's a lot of animals too, jackrabbits, javelina. There's deer. So yeah, surprisingly amount of food in the desert if you kind of do the research and yeah find out uh elf lord's journey says my dad and my uncle built my childhood home in the early 70s for around 15k and now it's worth 400k oh, plus wow. i don't doubt it oh is he messing with the glass <laughs> bottles he's like this will get their attention <laughs> crew what you doing out there crew <laughs> he's about he's about to mess with the black glass bottles oh there he goes all right <laughs> Can you take a hands-on course for the dome no um, um not specifically you attended I, like a couple of workshops was working on like earth bag domes yep uh just kind of helping out some of the neighbors kind of partially built one dome i didn't we didn't get to uh finish that one unfortunately and then i was just kind of and then i kind of helped out marcia gibbons at ransom ransom ranch um with the plastering mm -hmm. oh yeah 
I should have put my thing up. I should have. It's cold. cold. It's getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, it's probably what, like just below 50 or something, like probably like 49 <laughs> or something degrees. My like, God, oh, I'm freezing. <laughs> Crew is the boss. He's just, yeah, we're, he's... We're, we're here to. Well, he certainly thinks so. <laughs> He crew has a, a set schedule, and <laughs> he's very regimented that way. So if things don't go according to that schedule, he gets antsy. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, uh, apologies says this was already discussed I just tuned in what will the final finish coat be on the inside and the outside of the dome um, kind of discussed a little bit just um, but more cob will definitely be involved and then uh, some type of natural plaster we want to either kind of experiment with uh, animal dung or uh, Nap Napolitas. <laughs> Is he? Can he not make up his mind whether he wants to be inside or outside? I think he's probably hungry, and he's probably so he's probably getting kind of grumpy, grumpy because he's hungry. <laughs> um, sorry, y'all. It's gonna be. Kind of difficult without someone watching the chat for me. Uh, I'm thinking of doing some clumping bamboo to screen to my solar ground mount from the rest of the yard. Interesting idea. Give it a shot. <laughs> um, man, so I'm a kind of pretty excited about Saturday's video. Saturday will be uh, probably a lot of me in there, so I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh putting up the uh plywood on the eaves um cutting bottles so uh very kind of cool and uh i think you'll get a kind of hint a kind of uh, idea of jess's new design and i think it'll be very cool i think it's very cool it's a lot of bottle cutting though Okay, I'm going to have to kind of look back here. Will you plant shade trees? We're definitely going to be doing a lot more um, tree planting around here. Um, again, Jess uh, is definitely kind of particular about like, because, you know, trees are permanent structures or, you know, for the most part. So you really want to be planting the right trees in the right areas. So we definitely kind of want to look at sort of what trees we want to, what type of trees we want to plant, uh, where we want to plant them. So we kind of have an idea. It's just nailing down some of those details. But actually we'll probably be planting quite a bit of mesquite. Um, and mesquite trees, you know, very drought tolerant. Um, nitrogen fixing so you know if you're going to start a food forest especially here in the desert mosquito be a nice uh, companion plant for sure moringa trees definitely we'll definitely have some moringa trees out here uh it's a superfood so <laughs> i definitely think uh we'll have some of that oh, i feel so alone out here i don't know uh makes me more nervous <laughs> i don't have my co-pilot here um, and it's difficult. It's difficult to kind of, uh, be on the live via the phone, but, uh, just bear with me. <laughs> uh, swales for trees to get watered. there will definitely be a lot more earthworks. So, um, you know, we do a lot of rainwater harvesting out here and we try and catch rain 
off of all of our surfaces and try and store as much as we can. But one of the best ways to store and harvest rainwater is uh, right into the soil. So, you know, as much as you can sort of get that ground to be able to absorb the moisture, uh, that, that's all the better. So swales, we'll be definitely looking at some other earthworks and um, just does need to, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm scared to hear them all by myself. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where she went. I think she might've taken crew for a walk. Uh, maybe he needs to use the bathroom. I think sometimes where he gets like the most worked up is in his, when he's hungry and if he's got to use the bathroom. <laughs> Will you get any goats? Um, I don't know yet. I don't think we're not looking at goats currently. We're actually looking at sheep over goats. So we're leaning more towards sheep. Whether we get goats eventually, I don't know. But I think that might, besides maybe more chickens, it might be sheep that we're going to get out here. So I'm kind of excited about that. I can't wait till we get more animals out here. But, you know, if you get more animals, you definitely have to have the time and uh, the ability to kind of take care of them, make sure there are shelters built for them and stuff like that. So, so we can't, I, I feel like we can't do that while we're building the house. But yeah, I'm excited for more animals out here for sure. Uh, Jeff Lawton. Um, interesting that you should bring that up. Yeah, we're big fans of Jeff Lawton, and you know, especially the whole greening the desert thing is a uh, is greening the desert project. Uh, we actually both took Jeff Lawton's online PDC. So um, yeah, uh, so we got you know that was a very thorough P PDC. So we're both certified permaculture designers. Um, yeah, we're big fans of his work for sure. I wonder if, uh, Jess will make it out here before, uh, before we close up shop. <laughs> um, let's see, I'll have to look for some more questions. Bear with me here, everyone. It's tough. It's tough trying to do this solo. I don't. I I do it every week. <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about uh, doing it live. Well, that's I'm impressed because I can. Uh... <laughs> it's uh, it's difficult. It ain't easy. I'll give you credit for that. Uh, can I send my kid as a good labor intensive helper? Maybe. <laughs> I think uh, we could definitely uh, we definitely could use some extra hands out here every now and then. Will you do berms and swales on your property? Absolutely. Uh oh, Jess is back. I'm lost here without you, Jess. I'm lost without you. <laughs> I can't, how am I going to get by without you? And now right now everyone's leaving because you're not here. Yeah, they're like, we didn't come to see this guy. We came to see Jess. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Um, I, <laughs> I lost over here. I don't have any more questions. You got any? And you just, I know you just got back in, but. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, if you got a question, if you, if you can find a question, throw it out there. Or if anyone wants to throw any more questions, I think that's probably about it. Last questions, anyone? <laughs> North Star Prep Center has one. How old is Crew? We don't actually quite know exactly how old he is because he is a rescue. And um, thank you, Lone Star. Jess is back. <laughs> 499 for Jess being back. 
<laughs> she saved the show. Um, and then after he was rescued, your brother had him for a while. And then we got him. So we're thinking he is approximately 12 to 13 years old. He's almost a teenager. Yeah. So he's an old man dog for sure. Um, but he's doing pretty well. But it's just kind of a guess. Uh, so I'm excited for Saturday's video. Um, so much going on. We're working on both the window and the eve simultaneously. So be on the lookout for that. Very cool. Um, and then I guess we will end it here. Do you have anything you want to say? Any last things you want to talk about? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much to our moderators there in blue. They always do an amazing job. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you guys for being here for our live. Yeah, you know, you. Sometimes oh. we shift those lives around so it probably look at feels oh they're back on thursday again mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh thanks so much for joining us y'all it's such a good time uh we'll catch you uh catch you on saturday's video y'all so uh have a good night everyone mm -hmm. bye <laughs>